All right. Hi. Welcome to CKP Last Call. There will be who knows how much chaos uh, today. So you just saw an amazing intro. We haven't seen it yet. I'm sure it's amazing. Um, and we are going to just jump in with these incredible guests I have today who I will let introduce themselves. Um, so on my screen, Shady is right next to me. And also he joined the, the stream first. So I'm going to let him introduce himself first. That's it. What's right. up? So I'm David Shady Shadoin. Uh, currently, the only place you'll know me from is from a couple short stories uh, that I've done for CKP. And then these guys all know me through all the different other shenanigans that they have to put up with since, uh, since I joined CKP. So. Awesome. Like, so that's it. That's me. You're welcome. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, that's all you need to know for now. You'll, you'll find out more. You'll, sure. you'll learn as we go. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, <laughs> my big brother. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Kevin Eikenberry. I've uh, done a few books and a few short stories in CKP, uh, 13 novels, and I don't know how many short stories. So only uh, a few. One, of the core, one of the core authors of the Four Horsemen universe. So uh, going to be fun to be here with uh, people I consider family. Thanks. Nick. I am Nick Steverson. Uh, y'all know who the hell I am. Uh, Salvage Saturn Universe, and I've got six books written, some other coming out, novella, a handful of short stories, more coming. I'm never done, so you'll get sick of me at some point if you're not already. I consider Nick my my little, so I consider Kevin my big brother in writing, and Nick my little brother in writing. This has nothing to do with like writing experience or anything else, it's all about vibes. Um, in which case I feel like Shady's going to end up as like little brother vibes too. I feel like just, yeah, it's fine. Also, I just decide. I don't actually ask them if they're cool with that. So I am Reese Wolf. I apparently adopt writing brothers um, and I write science fiction and fantasy. I am the host of the show because nobody else wanted to be and I love chaos um, and I like drinking with my friends. So we're going to talk about books. Thank you. I just had some more alcohol delivered to me which is very exciting that was by producer jeremy there he is we like him <laughs> pop in okay, jeremy. bye yeah <clears throat> so what we're gonna do in this in this hour ish or so together um is drink uh i am drinking some ginger infused bourbon from the ginger infused bourbon homeland of charleston south carolina um gentlemen would you like to talk about what you'll be partaking in this evening So currently, I'm doing some uh, single malt Welsh whiskey from the uh, Penderin area called Myth. It's a great, great box, right? It's a really nice looking box, especially for fantasy sci-fi authors. Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then I usually, I, usually I do scotch, or I've got a little basil Hayden back here, but I'll probably nice. stick with that for now. That dragon's awesome. Great. I'm keeping it easy tonight. Drinking the, the beer I can't get in Colorado. Uh, had some in-laws bring me four cases of Yingling. Uh, so it's it's nice to, to have this for a little bit of time. And it makes it even better when the in-laws are, are going back and forth between here and where they live. Because I'll get four more cases in about another two weeks. So I'm pretty happy about that. That's pretty sweet. That's good family right there. I like that. What you got back there, Nick? You got all kinds of cool stuff. I got cool stuff. Uh, I'm, right now, I'm drinking a 12-year uh, rare cask Appleton rum mixed with some Dr. Pepper cream soda. Uh, but I also got a Buffalo Trace. Uh, I got an Eagle Rare, some Blantons. And then I got an E.H. Taylor that I picked up yesterday. I don't think I'll be opening that one. That one's really <laughs> hard to get. Um, That's fair. Probably going to hang on to it for a minute. I just wanted everybody else to be jealous as hell. Yeah, that sounds right. Here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I see I, Kevin's eyeball on this Blanton's back here. I, I see him mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. I heard a rumor. Yep. There's a rumor that we might do one of these shows live at Liberty Con. Um, and I heard a rumor that Nick was going to bring some good stuff to that. I Probably always not. bring good stuff. Always. True. That's true. That's fair. Marisa, if, if you don't yeah. say it's a rumor, it's canon. It's canon on the internet, so it's yeah, happening. No. Um, I don't know if he's going to bring something that rare for us, but you know, some, some good stuff. I think we'll. I won't, I won't be. 
I won't be stingy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Allegedly. you for making that canon. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's real on the internet now, man. People, people like know. that. He won't be stingy. No. No, we know. We, emp we, know. we emptied a whole bottle of Blantons at Factory Con in October. And it wasn't just, it wasn't a regular Blantons. It was no, it, it was, was a, a single one. barrel of Blantons. It was a single. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jer Jeremy had some of that and I, he was It was, he was really good about it. Yeah. Somebody at Fantasy had this peach bourbon and I cannot tell you how glad I am. I don't know what it is uh, because he's also somebody who makes moonshine. And it's always really good. But this peach, maybe it was brandy. I don't know. It was late. It was karaoke. Um, but it was one of the most delicious things I have ever sipped in my life to the point that it's like, so your, your rum and cream soda idea, which sounds just so good. It's dangerous. It was, oh, it was so good. It was dangerous. It's really good. Yeah. I knew a guy up in North Dakota, guard guy, who brewed his own moonshine. And he always did this apple pie moonshine. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely dangerous like that. Like you could drink a whole jar of it and not notice until you went to stand up. And then you couldn't <laughs> stand anymore. Oh, yeah, that, was, that was the moonshine two years ago at, at Fantasy. That, his main yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who yeah. – uh, who makes some really good peach moonshine. And I'll be honest, I don't like anything peach flavored. Nothing. Yeah. I don't like yeah. peach flavored stuff. Yeah. But mm. that was absolutely delicious. And I tried yeah, a sip of it and I said, holy hell. Yeah. The, if it's the peach moonshine I'm thinking of, this wasn't fantasy. This was factory con. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I poured myself about this much. And Nick's mom was like, no, 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 sweetie, no. You better share that with, like, three other people. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, no, okay. Yeah. And I took a sip, and I was like, oh, shit. Well, they even told I me, because I went to turn the cup up, and they're like, hold on. No, no. Yeah, they don't know. They know. You know, I, mean, I was I, there when that bother me. Yeah. I'll take a, a real drink, yeah. you know. Yeah. But that, no, you're talking 170 or higher. It was, it mm -hmm. was insane. Yeah. Insane. And it was so good. It was amazing. So good. But I, was I will say the, the butterscotch shine that we had three years ago now. Yeah. Oh, I'm still dying to get my hands on more of that. It was so yeah. good. It was like candy. Oh, man. Yep. All right. Yeah. Drinking. We're pitching drinks really well. I feel like that's <laughs> pretty great. Mm. I mean, well, I can, it's last fall, right? Yeah. yeah we're fall. talking. We're talking. Yeah. It's, you got to talk about yeah. the drinks. <laughs> We're going to do all the things. We're going to talk about the drinks, talk about the books, talk about drinking while we write the books. Um, maybe you talk about drinking in the books. I think all of us put a bar scene in almost every book we do. I do. I do. There are at least three bar scenes in the book I'm currently writing. Yeah. yeah there's, at My, least, there's at least yeah. a significant drink in pretty much everything I've done. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I hadn't put that together until you said that, Nick, but um, yeah, that's accurate. Every book I've written, there's a freaking bar scene. <laughs> I was realizing I had to. So I did two noir short stories over the last like year or so. Um, and so those have to have bar. Like you can't have a noir story without a bar scene, right? But as you were saying that, I was like, yeah, totally. In my noir books and the book I'm passing in next month and all of my Four Horsemen books and all of my short stories. Okay, yeah, so I do. I do. <laughs> I was going to say that well, the Protocol but, War series I have is that there's a, a bar that's a significant location all the way through the series. So that's nice. the way it works. That's how it is in my salvage title books. I have two staple bars that are in every single one of them, except the Space Hyenas books. Hmm. But even they have a staple bar that's now through every single one. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. My last salvage title story I wrote entirely because I wanted to steal the idea of this like real life um, I think they were a naval crew, but like everywhere they went, they would start a bar fight. And I was like, how amazing it would be for that to be a cover for like, they were gathering intelligence, but like you start a bar fight to cover for the fact that other stuff is happening. And that was the entire reason I wrote the story for that last selfish book. It was a great I mean, story too. <laughs> That's you. my excuse for starting bar fights. Totally. It's to cover for somebody else, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Espionage is happening. Totally, I hear that. totally why I do it. It's fine. I met my husband after a bar fight that I was not involved in whatsoever. It's fine. <laughs> whatsoever, huh? Not even a little bit. Nope. Uh -huh. I, uh -huh. <laughs> I wasn't there when it happened, so you can't. Story time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This uh, this sounds like a great story, Marisa. Yay! 
Yeah, it was maybe after this drink, but um, yeah. It, okay, so the short version is um, I got into a drinking contest with my friend's naval intelligence buddy who had just come back from Afghanistan, so he hadn't been able to drink for the entirety of his deployment. Um, and so I was, he, he wanted to go out drinking, but his friend, who was my friend, was super straight edge, didn't drink. And he's like, well, I know a girl who will drink with you, so it'll be great. We'll just all go out. And so like an idiot, I challenged him to a drinking contest. In my defense, I was like 24, 25. Like I still had the, the tolerance of a Viking, which I no longer have evidenced by. I've had one drink and I'm fanning myself. Um, so we're at a bar. I was already drunk when we got there. Um, we were doing shots. Uh, it's fine. It's, I was 25. I was poor. So we pre-gamed. Um, so we're doing shots. There was a boy across the bar I thought was cute, but I wasn't, I wasn't there to flirt with boys. I was there for a drinking contest. Um, this other guy came by that I had gone on like one date with and not a thing. Um, and so Jeremy, my now husband, was the cute boy across the bar. And he came over and was playing pool with us. Um, and the boy I had gone on one date with started some shit with the naval guy that I had been in a drinking contest with. And the naval guy may or may not have picked him up and, and put him in a trash can um, after some <laughs> some words <laughs> were exchanged. It's fine. It's fine. I married the boy I met that night, so everything's fine. That guy was trash. That guy, that's basically, I think, what he said. He's like, sir, you're trash. And no, good day. <laughs> That's awesome. I great. said good day, sir. I said good day, sir. This is not for you. I don't remember anybody's name except the man I married. So that's fine. But it was great. Oh, my 20s were a long time ago, guys. So that was the thing. So bar fights and stories. Super fun. Anybody else have this? No? Okay, weird. I've been in house party fights, but I don't think I've ever been in a bar fight. I feel like I've heard some of your house party fights. Stories. House party fights and, and mm -hmm. field party fights, school fights and football field fights. That's about mm -hmm. it. That, that's all though. Just like four kinds of fights. Yeah, four. Only, only four. Only four. Yeah. I don't know how many, uh, like, I don't know if the statute of limitations is up on some of my stories. So I'm just going to <laughs> <laughs> have to keep some of those. It's a wise you know idea. It was a good party yeah. when you wake up the next day and you sit up and you're thankful you didn't land in that ant bed over there. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, no, I don't think I've ever woken up outside after a party. There was there was mm. one house party fight that I remember that uh, mm. I was a relatively new helicopter co-pilot. Um, and we had gotten real drunk on Halloween at somebody's house. And two of the two of the wives, I think, started getting real angry at each other. And I got to the point where I drank too much and they were taking way too long at the front door and I just wanted to leave. <laughs> and so it was it was one of those things where I started like shoving my way through like the crowd of people standing around the door and I'm like, guys, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna walk home, you know, like but that's not what came out. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I just want to walk home. Like, I just want to leave right now. Mm. That's not what came out. What came out was drunk and shady going, guys, I work for the Jag at Laughlin. I can, <laughs> I can deal with this. <laughs> just, oh, no. one, of the, one of the guys who'd been there a while just like stops and goes, shady, turn back around. You do not want to get involved in this. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> and then finally, like, people left. It worked out. Like it worked itself out, but I like as I'm starting to leave, he's like, Shady, next time you want to get involved in a fight, like pick somebody not in the squad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tried diplomacy, that's fair. I was like, I was like, I, I wasn't trying to get in a fight, I just want to go home. It's like that's not what you said. <laughs> what you said. I mean, you could have said worse things, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, there's something to be said for getting, you know, getting away from fights, but also keeping your friends out of trouble when you're oh. incredibly drunk. You know, I was at the officers club one night at an installation not to be named. And I had a friend of mine basically reach over the bar and grab this ginormous handle of something, oh, <laughs> like Lord. put it under his shirt and walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember watching it going. That's not good. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's top shelf too he was reaching high not low he was oh man it was 
yeah, so caught caught him and brought the bottle back in and sent him home before the uh, MPs could come. Yeah, avoid that stuff at all costs if you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing. Self shows bartending up in a is not advised. Never, mm -mm, mm -mm. never Do not recommend. <laughs> Unless you're in your own house, in which case, self bartend all all you want. Totally, yeah. Or a house party where you know the people and they're not getting in a fight with somebody else's wife. That's probably... <laughs> Actually, yeah. most of the time when you end up at a house party, you don't know whose fucking house it is. That, that's a very particular kind of lifestyle, Nick. I would say almost I'm always saying, knew. I mean, honestly, I never... I, I can remember two house parties that I went to that I actually knew the people who owned the house. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like small town, you know, you get all these other small towns that are around oh, and yeah, your sure. buddy knows this guy in this town and this guy knows this guy in this, and you end up three towns away and you're mm -hmm. in this house and you're like, oh, they got nice shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Better than needing like hobo stab insurance. So right? it's good to be in the nice shit house. Yeah, for sure. You know, or, or spring break and you find yourself in a, in a room party in somebody else's hotel and you have no idea where the hell you're at. Yep. yep. Mm. That's that, was con that was conventions, early conventions. Woke up on the beach too. Yeah, yeah I forgot that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I, I tried. So I went to prom my ninth grade year, right? I got, I got invited by a senior ninth, ninth grade. I went to it. I went to prom. This was the first night I ever drank and I drank way too much and I drank a stupid drink for my first drink. The mm -hmm. stupidest thing you can ever drink for your first drink is uh -huh. white Russians. <laughs> Milk That's and my... vodka. That's my alcohol poisoning story, and, but and, continue. And, yeah. and 16 ounce glasses and I was drinking a lot of them. Mm. Apparently mm. I tried to jump in the fucking pool. <laughs> I was, As one does. I, I woke up on the beach <laughs> the next morning at the hotel way the fuck back there. Well, they wouldn't let you go in the pool, so you had to go to the ocean. That yeah. checks out. Yeah, that makes sense. I woke up and went up there, and my date was passed out on the patio, <laughs> and all the friends we were hanging out with, there were strangers there. I didn't fucking know who they were. So That's amazing. I'm, I'm like, how old are you in ninth grade? 14. 15, 14, yeah. 14, 15, 15 yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Everybody's passed out drunk. This was the before cell phones, really. You Thank know, God. Uh -huh. so yeah. I used the uh, I used the Thank inside God. cell phone to call my date's mom. And be like, we can't move. <laughs> Can you come get us? <laughs> then she had to come and revive everybody. It was hilarious. Oh, that is a cool mom who had a lot of conversations with her daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For those of you we planning on drinking up a bit, I had alcohol poison and it was terrible. For those of you planning on drinking like Nick and and I won't condone it, but like I did, uh, don't do the gallon challenge with vodka. It's not it's not a good idea. Okay, this and, is why we're friends. With milk? Oh my god, mm. what the fuck was I thinking? The dairy. I didn't know what it was. She called no. it a white Russian. She's pouring vodka and milk together. No, I'm like, oh, milk, milk's good for you. Fuck it. Yeah. It's so, it's my bones bounces out the alcohol oh my god it was so terrible oh, terrible god. i haven't had a white russian since yeah so i haven't had <clears throat> vodka since so nick my fast forward freshman in college not high school because i i did not drink in high school um but Good. i so we we did yeah I, I was just i was a nerd it's fine um but freshman year i made up for it um and so it's like November of freshman year and I was like I don't get hangovers I'm amazing at this drinking thing um and so we had white Russians and then you know we ran out of milk so we had black Russians and then we ran out of Kahlua so we had vodka in in plastic gallon jugs because we were freshmen at a state school that's the budget Quality. that we were working with and I don't know what the gallon challenge is, Shady, nor do I want to, because what I do know is I challenged my six foot five friend to a vodka chugging contest that I won. And the next thing I remember, because I won, <laughs> was four hours later and I was puking in a bat. It's the one and only time I blacked out. Um, and but did you really win then? I did not. That's why I won. <laughs> um <laughs> I won alcohol poisoning is what I won. And I won yep. sleeping on my friend's floor for two days uh, because I couldn't get home. <laughs> it was, I, that was real the, bad. The worst Black. part 
is I had football practice the next day. Oh, fuck no. I had football practice, and my grandpa was the coach. <laughs> How many times so, did you puke? How so you puke? So I'm uh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. And the guys yeah. kept saying, I smell alcohol. <laughs> Somebody smells like straight alcohol. And one of the, the cool popular kids was like, Oh, it's me. I was I was out drinking yeah. last night. And I'm thinking Yeah, it was it's you. Because I wasn't fitting on of that shit. My grandpa had my ass. I'd be running gasters all freaking day. I just stayed quiet. <laughs> Sunburn is shit because I woke up on the beach and yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> It was terrible. I didn't say a word, but yeah, I was I was bleeding alcohol. I had poi- I was oh. alcohol poison, and I just let the kid have his fake glory. Yeah. It was hilarious. While you're puking, it's not yeah. there's no glory. There's no glory. After like, what was wrong with you? I'm tired, pop. Let me go. <laughs> I went to a dance with a senior. It's very tiring. Yeah, Marissa, the gallon challenge. Oh when no! You take a yeah. gallon of milk and you chug it without throwing up. So if you just drink nothing but white Russians for the night, right? Half mm-hmm. half milk, half vodka. You are essentially <laughs> doing an alcoholic's version of a gallon <laughs> shower. <challenge. Yeah, challenge. laughs> but I did puke, so I lost, is what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's I don't hideous. remember how many we ended up drinking. I, I I know I was stupid enough to I remember at one point one of the guys dared me to chug the whole glass and I did it. And mm-hmm. I don't remember a whole lot after that. Yeah, hmm. no. This is why I don't drink Jägermeister anymore. That was my freshman, <laughs> no, year. My, my freshman year at the beach. You know, we, we'd probably, we'd been drinking since probably 10 o'clock in the morning. And I have no idea how many beers deep I was, but then the Jägermeister came out. And I remember two shots. And I'm pretty sure that we did many more than that because I woke up the next morning on the balcony of the hotel. And this was, it was one, not my room. <laughs> not my hotel and i wake up and i've told this story before but i wake up and i look across and literally at the the balcony next door are two people having sex (laughs) i mean sure why not and i I remember just kind of waking up and you know they look at me and i look at them i'm like hey (laughs) hey guys don't mind me just keep doing what you're doing just, uh, here. So, Good so form, I, you know, buddy. I'm just, I'm just sitting there for the you know, they they leave and I'm sitting there and so one of my buddies comes out. He would have been in the in the room, passed out, mm-hmm. and he walks out and he literally hands me a beer and a package of pop tarts. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Here the dog, buddy. We were we were off and running again. So yeah, Whew. no no more Jägermeister. I've, I haven't had it since. That's that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say I don't particularly like Jaeger because it tastes like shitty cough syrup. But a Jaeger bomb, about two of them, I'll do. I'll, I can hang one like Jaeger and Red Bull. That's really good. No, chug when I was, shit. Oof, no. Towards no, the end of college is when Red Bull and vodka became like a really big thing. Um, because I'm old and Red Bull was new then. Um, but I couldn't drink vodka because of the white Russian story. Um, And so I did Red Bull and rum. Um, And I will just say there's something really bad, really bad about at the same time drinking caffeine and alcohol and just in large quantities. And I tried multiple times to jump out of a moving car um, because I really wanted to go to an after party and my roommates wouldn't let me because I was very drunk. And they were correct. I was not correct. But the Red Bull said that I was correct. And so I tried to get out of the car. I was shouting at people driving by if they would take me to the after party, which they would. They said they would. Um, and my roommates were like, motherfucker, if you do not stay in this goddamn car. <laughs> like, what? You're really you know what's Ooh. really good? Live your action here it is. and Sprite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be good. No, I will not. But it sounds delicious. So. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We were in, what is this, 10 years ago now, 11 years ago now. I was in Italy doing a, no doing a competition. Yeah. My senior senior year at, at a school, a Colorado school for kids who can't read, get into other things, good. Um, 10 years ago. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Fine. You baby. I know. Hey. Like my stories were so many decades ago. I hate you all. Okay, carry on. That's why I left my years out there, Marisa. <laughs> Me too. I just needed to remind you guys. Still yeah, got yeah, the best yeah. parts of my life out of me. 
<laughs> well, no, you've, you've used up quite a bit of your liver. So carry Thanks, on. Mike. Love you too. Yeah. Uh, All right, so 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, we were in, we were in uh, San Remo, Italy, doing an international law competition. And I was hanging out with some of the Canadians, the, uh, the Aussies and the French. And we, they, uh, they were teaching me a new game called God Save the Queen. And I'd never heard of it before. Um, and for those of you who have ever worked with uh, internationals, you've probably learned this game at some point while you're out drinking with them because they know they can take advantage of it. Kevin's nod is the nod of one who knows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tell I know. The rest I, of us. Uh, so they ordered, they ordered us to start the night. So we're just getting started on the night. It's like 6 PM there or something. And we're going to, we're probably going to drink till one or two in the morning. They start the night off with what's called a zombie. And it is like a 12 ounce glass of six different double shots of alcohol. And they all arrive and they all start, you know, they, they grab their, they grab their glasses. They start to cheers and we got to slam them on the on the bar just to take a drink, even though we're not going to shoot the whole thing. And one of them yells, God save the queen. And they throw the coin in the drink, in my drink. Mm. For those of you who don't know, the Canadians, the Australians, the English all have the queen's face on their currency. Mm. And so God save the queen means save the queen from drowning. You cannot <laughs> stop drinking <laughs> until she's saved. <laughs> <laughs> and I like I you know I gotta set my glass down and then somebody does that to me and I'm like what that what the hell he's like you gotta drink the whole thing mate <laughs> and I'm like okay and just down it immediately and I pull the coin out I was like that's how we're gonna start the night <laughs> I was like all righty oh then. here we go <laughs> and so so then the rest of the night became trying to protect your drinks from the Canadians and the Aussies nope. yeah. <clears throat> yep <laughs> you pretty much yeah. just like yeah. if you're not drinking it's just hey how's it going you know. <laughs> What up? Turns into yeah. God save me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God save my liver. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, cool. <laughs> drunk that night. horrifying. So what I'm hearing is there should be more funny, sneaky drinking games in in books. Any any sci-fi or fantasy book that involves some kind of military function <laughs> should have more ridiculous drinking games. So Absolutely. so with Melissa being um, <clears throat> Air Force, right? Mm -hmm. She knew a few things of, that I don't know because I was never in the military. And she knows a little more, a lot, well, all the more traditions than I do. So <clears throat> we actually implemented one of those into the Space Hyenas books as far as drinking goes. So it's a lot of fun, you know, and it involves um, what we call challenge coins, right? But she said that's incorrect. If you call it a challenge coin, you owe whomever you said it to a drink mm -hmm. because they're not called challenge coins. They're called RMOs around metal object. Mm -hmm. So. See, that's an air force thing. They're, they're challenge coins. Mm -hmm. Depends yeah. on who you ask. Yeah. That's fun. And she's like, Nope, Nope. We're going to do, we're going to do the air force thing. And I'm like, cool. Works for me. That's, no, that's super fun. I did uh, my short story and chicks and tank tops starts off uh, with the main character super drunk um and they're in a very they're in the pre-assignment games which are the games they just invented right before they get on their like first formal assignment because i have known back more than 10 years ago shady um i i knew people who were new in their careers um and i will not reveal their names because they are now very fancy in certain armed forces um but i i saw these yahoos coming out of various trainings before they went on to different things and i was like oh yeah we need some fun drinking games up in this like you can drink out of anything as long as it's not a cup. No, it's fun. It's good times. So you couldn't drink it out of a cup? Nope, no cups. Hmm. Shoes, objects from the engine room, um, planters, pants, if you were really creative. You know, yeah, whatever. that antifreeze really, really goes down well. Yep. A little bit of motor oil never hurt anybody. It's fine. Just gives it's you a slight fun. tingle in the spine. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are there are things you're like. I am the token teacher in this room. I do not have to obey these rules. I'm just gonna drink in the corner. It's gonna be great. <laughs> don't mind me. That was lots of years ago, though, Shady. They probably don't do things like that anymore. Of course not. No, of course not. 
course not. Decades, decades, and decades ago. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Nick, you should tell us about Space Hyenas because eventually this is going to come out, and I think at least the first Space Hyena book will be out. Um, uh, yeah. The uh, so Space pitch. Hyenas one, which is Hunters and Hijinks, <clears throat> comes out on April twenty eighth. It was supposed. It was originally the May fifth, but now it's uh, April twenty eighth. Um, <clears throat> it's just. Melissa and I call it ridiculousness because it's that's all it is. She and I had both just got done writing like super serious mm -hmm. sci-fi space opera stuff, and I wanted to do something fun, right? Something stupid, something that make me laugh, make everybody else laugh, you know. I, I, and I want I like comedy. I, I, I'm always joking around, making sarcastic comments, and fucking with people. Never. So. I wanted to write something more along those lines. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, you know, I had this idea for a group of uh, Junji, which are basically bipedal uh, hyenas in Salvage Universe. And I wanted to do a galactic treasure ship, treasure hunt ship, treasure hunt with a bunch of idiots, yeah. right? Just a bunch of morons go on this treasure hunt. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And, uh, and I, and I called Melissa one day. I'm like, Hey, I got this idea with the Junji. Do you want to, do you want to work on this with me? I want somebody a little more like-minded to do this. I want to do this quick. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple text messages and, and, and a lot of just bullshittery going between me and Melissa with like dialogue and stuff. And we've got a book planned. It turns into a trilogy, turns into two trilogies. And Melissa and I are like best friends now. I love that girl to death. She's awesome. She's, uh, she's a fantastic writer. Uh, I swear to God, she's better than I am. Um, I have learned so much from her. Just, just the way she writes, it's so smooth. It's like way smoother than anything I do, you know. But the the gist of of, of hunters and hijinks is so. If you took the cast from the Office, the American Office, mm -hmm. and Goonies. And Guardians of the Galaxy and Indiana Jones rolled it up into a ball and threw it against the wall. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what it is. And they're just a bunch of office workers that get tired of their jobs. Reggie is a is a a, a tech support guy who answers the phone all day. Maddie is the accountant. Harold is the uh, the records keeper in the company, and Ed is the custodian. Amazing. And it's just. They all say screw it and they leave. You know, there's a there's a jackass that works there named Chad. They're all sick of him. Everybody hates a Chad. You know, everyone hates a Chad. Everybody hates a Chad. You know, and and it's just it's, and there goes our Chad it, part of the audience. Sorry, Chad, not you, Chad. Just the the me, the, the, the metaphorical Chad. Chads. Yeah, yeah, metaphorical Chads, right? The the bros, um, the hanging Chads. We don't know. Yeah, the Deep hanging cut. Chads. <laughs> okay, that's an old people joke it's fine and, and you know the, the book is just it's it's fun it is a lot of fun and then we hit on a like uh we hit on a few super serious you know things uh there was there was one scene that that randall uh the the future podcast guy there's one bar mm -hmm. scene that he really connected to and he really liked it um but you know it's just like if you got tired of your job, you got tired of your job. We all got tired of our job. And we're like, fuck this. Let's go. And we take off and we go on this massive treasure hunt for, I don't know, the lost Ark or, or something like that, you know, and it just, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. And everything that can go wrong goes wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but. No, that's great. I um, love that. Turns out that's what a drunk pitch does. That's, yeah. that's who we are as people. I like it. Yeah, it's no, a lot of fun. Maddie's fun. A, Maddie's yeah. a, an angry little ball of rage, uh, caffeine addicted accountant. You know, Reggie's a super controlled guy, which there's a reason for that. You find out later on. Mm -hmm. um, Ed is just Ed. He's a stoner. Ed's a stoner. One hundred percent. Ed. Ed. Ed likes his 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 vape pen. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then Her okay. And then Harold. If I had. It, 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 He's Sean Connery from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. 100%. We named know, the and, dog uh, Indiana. Like yeah. It. yeah. It, but, you know, Hunters and Hijinks, yeah, it comes out the 28th of, the, of April. Should Woo! be out when this comes out. Um, I think so. The, uh, maybe. 
I don't know. I don't know when this is coming out. I don't know how time works. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Time's relative according to Einstein. Um, we don't do time math according to Marisa. We get a hundred percent. That's correct. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're not saying, in the same list. we're, so. we're not uh, telling what book two and three are titled. They're just mm -hmm. space hyenas two and three. <laughs> Because Mystery the titles title. actually flow in sequence with the story. So if I told you a book two and three were, you'll know what happens. Yeah. I will tell so. you a secret. They're all alliterative and delightful. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of also, fun. Super fun. I believe they were called Madcap Fun by one of your uh, awesome blurb authors. Yes. Christopher Rucchio said yes. it was Madcap Fun. Fun, and that is going to be a cover blurb that he supplied for me and it's gonna and he sent me because I, I sent it i sent him all three books and mm -hmm. he he said he very much enjoyed it and if you've read anything that rukio has written it's fantastic mm -hmm. but he's not the light the light-hearted writer at all no, no. and he, even though it's not his thing he said he had a blast reading it. so that's awesome i, I take that as a huge compliment especially from him and I was super stoked that, that, that he enjoyed it. There's a reason I brought it up on. So Melissa has done one of these shows already also. And I brought it up on that one too. Because I don't think we can bring that up enough. That's awesome. That's a great yeah. quote. Yeah. That's awesome. Kevin, what's the most fun you've had writing something? Hmm. <clears throat> most fun? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I, I tend to have fun with all the, the different projects that I write. I, I like being able to, to tell bits and pieces of, of you know, actual things that have happened or stories that have been related to me by other people. Um, so there's, there's different things. I mean, um, I think one of the, the, the first ones that I did was in my book runs in the family, which was the first book I tried to write. It was the second book I ended up selling, but there's a, a whole sequence where there's a discussion about jumping out of an airplane and it's purely right my my memories from going through the the basic parachutist course. So it was a lot of fun to be able to, to interject that kind of stuff in. Um, what I'm trying to do now, I'm I'm actually looking at developing a couple of different new projects that deal with uh, primarily armored armored forces in space. Uh, mm -hmm. So dealing with uh, futuristic tanks and whatnot in, in tank warfare, because uh, that's what I did. That's what I did the first part of my military career, and. I've got a, a couple different things that I'm working on. Um, one of which is it's, I, I haven't even come up with what the pitch for it would be. It's, it's kind of like a modern, like a modern techno thriller, but set forward a couple of hundred years. And you've got a, a group of, of disparate people that are, you know, dealing with armored forces and air forces and even maybe potentially space forces that are, are forced to work together to actually uh, recover a crew that's been downed behind enemy lines. But the problem is that because of, of the, of at least one person on the crew and what they mean to earth, there's people on earth that don't want them to succeed. So they're dragging their feet as far as providing the necessary resources and actual decision-making to actually get these people out of this, you know, harm's way situation. So that's, that's going to be fun to continue to, to kind of develop that one a little bit. I had the idea a few years ago, and I just kind of I put it on the back burner for a while because I was I was having to write, uh, you know, trying to get through a bunch of Four Horsemen Universe books and sure. trying to bring the Protocol War back. And so now it's it's something that it's it's more to the the front burner now. And I'll I'll continue to to look at it as we go forward. I think the next thing that uh, I'll be working on, Bast, I'm working on a, on a, another Guardian book. So giant robots fighting aliens. It's pure popcorn fun. That's what we we love about it. Um, but I'm going to be writing with Nick and we're going to pick up the storyline from what happened in the misfits and on a cloudy day and move it forward so that people can see what's happening. Cause there's been a lot of um, consternation <laughs> about, <laughs> That's a word. Uh -huh. what, about what, what Jason Cordova and I did. And um, speaking of, of drunken conversations, this, mm. this started two years ago at factory con and it was Jason and I and Nick and Matt Novotny. And I don't know how deep all of us were, but man, we, we got to talk. There was some and, butterscotch uh, moonshine apparently. So. And that, that's, that's where all the, all of the, the, the whole storyline for those two books kind of came together in that, that one probably hour and a half. And 
untold number of yinglings uh, <laughs> that, that were consumed. Stop, Nick. <laughs> untold. It was. It, yeah, it's four, it, we we did four storylines. We did those two books, Honey Badger, and our book. So we did yeah. four books in that inebriated session. It was insane. Yeah, it, it really was, and it was it was fun to just kind of be able to to sit down and 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 bounce the ideas off because you know. It, whenever you get any of us together, we like to have these conversations and, and, you know, different possibilities come out. You add, you add alcohol to it and there's a little bit more, you know, a little bit more creative spark, if you will. And that, that night in particular was, well, yeah. And and that night was one that I, you know, even having, you know, we drank, we drank all day. It was factory con drinking during the meeting and drinking afterward. I remember going to bed thinking about that storyline and got up the next morning thinking about that storyline. So it's fun to, to be able to, to kind of harness all of that creative energy because immediately when you do something along those lines, you don't forget it. Yeah, I was, I think it was one of my very first panels I was on at a convention and I was on the panel with Jim Butcher and we, we talked about the, 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 the idea generation process. And, and Jim said, basically, when you get the big idea, you don't have to write it down because you'll never forget it. And that night was one of those that it, even I don't think I think any of us, if we had, it, had not taken the notes that we had, if we didn't have those, we still would have been able to take everything and move it forward. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Do you guys want to do you want to talk a little bit about the book that you guys are writing together? So I'll start, Nick. So the, the, the book is called A Ray of Sunshine. So it does, it's obviously going to pick up with Rayleigh Riley, who is a character that, that Nick and I d actually designed. This, and this, there's a funny story behind that. So uh, I was flying along with Mark Stallings. We were flying, I think, to Liberty Con, mm -hmm. or it may have been Fantasy. I don't remember, but it was a couple of years fantasy. ago. We it was, so we were flying through Chicago Midway. And so we flew from Colorado Springs to Midway. And so we had like a two hour layover. So we went to the, the little you know, display of what the restaurants are. And so we walk around to where the restaurants are and there's this Irish pub and the Irish pub in Chicago's uh, Midway airport is named Riley's daughter. And so I had introduced a character, Rayleigh, I introduced Raleigh Riley in honor the threat way back. And so I had Nick had actually talked about maybe maybe him having a kid at some point. And so we had had this conversation probably within two weeks before this trip. And so I walk in, see this, I take a picture and send it to Nick. And it was just like all of a sudden, bam, we had this character completely fleshed out and the, this whole storyline. So this will pick up with what happens with Rayleigh and the company that she is rebuilding now going forward. And I, I, you know, I, I made the comment, I think, to it was privately just recently to, to a reader. But the questions that people have at the end of the misfits will be answered in the first 10 pages of the book that Nick and I will write, because there is it's essentially a prologue to the book. But it will set up where everything is going in the future, because it's, it, there was such a traumatic experience writing those two books with Jason and the different characters and how we ended story arcs. There's, there were certainly at least some of the, the readers that have really followed along had, had questions. And so all of those will be answered very, very early. Oh. Yep. Nick, is there anything you want to add about that before I? So, so, so <clears throat> the first 10 pages will answer most of the questions. Yeah, there's more. Some of the other questions, I'm going to string your ass along because that's how I like to play. Sure, it's a yeah. whole book. But, yeah, ten pages. but you will learn a lot. I mean, we'll answer everything in, in a ray of sunshine. And it's going to be a fun ride. And I'm going to piss you off till about halfway through the book. And then you're going to figure it out. And then you're going to look back in the book and say, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you're, because I'm, I've already, I've talked to Kevin about it, you know, and, and I've even, and I've talked to Jason and, 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 and all this. And, you know, we, we've all discussed it. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that we're going to do certain things is, is going to be a lot of fun. God. And, and I love to mess with a reader. I really do. It's fun, but in a good way, not mess with them in a bad way, in a good way. Yeah. yeah not like leave them on the hook. for 15 No, 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 no. Yeah. It's just, it's going to be fun and it's going to be just, I can't wait to write this book. To be honest with you. That's awesome. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
It really is. I'm I'm like, I'm working with Ike. I'm lurking. I'm looking forward to that because I know I'm going to learn a lot of shit. Nice. And you know, he's worked with my dad, so he knows how to work with a pantser already. With a um, Steve Rissen, yeah. <clears throat> So, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I love Ray. I think Ray's a great character. I love Kray Sokai. I'm really looking forward to writing Kray Sokai because mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed, even when he was still a villain, I very much enjoyed reading him. Like hit when, when I see, when I would see it was his POV in a book, I would get excited because yeah. I just, I love his character. I really do. And, and now that him and the character that Kevin and I have created are so close, and there's that bond. Mm -hmm. It's 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 really going to be something special. I look, I'm looking forward to that. I really, really am. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the introduction of Rayleigh was the the reason why I redeemed him. I mean, that's that's really how that worked. As we were going through the the, the process with the two books, you know, we Jason and I were talking very on, and Jason was like, "Oh, this is a great villain. You know, are you sure you want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah, it's because of his relationship with Ray." That's what that's what's going to be the thing that's going to break him of the thought process and the other things that have been done to him to, to bring him back along. And so now being able to kind of follow along with what's happened with them post the, the events of the misfits will, will be a lot of fun to address. And yeah, being being able to, to show folks that you know, I, I posted recently, we're not done. <laughs> you know, there was there was a very significant thing that happened at the end of the, the misfits, but we're not done. Yeah, I think yeah. I think the fact that this book's going to come out with the Phoenix Initiative is very very appropriate. Nice. Yeah, oh, I would that's agree. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so speaking of 4HU and co-writing, uh, one just so this will be on the internet, Kevin. I feel like at some point we have to write a book together. That feels really at some important. point we do. Yeah, I guess, at, at I guess, some point hey. we do. That'd be good. Um, but in the meantime, there are some 4HU co-written books happening with Shady. No. Uh, would you like to talk about that, Shady? Yeah, sure. Actually, and and it, it's funny, right? Because we, you and I, did that episode, did a couple episodes of talking about my co-author Casey Azell. We did. She's great. Behind her back, right? Um, <clears throat> no. So she and I, uh, for the last, for the last little bit of time, and we we've had some stuff kind of interrupt our, our workflow a little bit, but actual uh, life, we've been, yeah. yeah, real life. We've been working on a Depic companion novel, possible trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We'll see how the first one plays. Yes. <laughs> uh, currently, no, no set date for it yet. It's in the works. The mm -hmm. drunken pitch is if oh, yeah. uh, Dick Tracy and an assassin cat had to uh, had to solve the. The problem with human trafficking on Earth. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Can you miss Carmen San Diego in there too? Probably. Um. So that's in book two. If it comes, <laughs> if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is there is a Carmen San Diego character, and you don't quite realize it until later. Ooh. Is it the big hat that gives it away? Spice. It's the it's the trench yeah, it's, coat. It's the trench yeah. coat. Yeah, it's definitely the trench coat. No, uh, in, in fact, um, it's funny. Casey uh, on her on her Discord channel was doing some MJ stuff, uh, mid journey stuff, and she created this like noir photo. And I knew exactly what it was the minute I saw what the prompt was. I was like, I know what she's thinking about right now. Nice. And it was it was a very like noir detective. Uh, it was like a you know, of course, I went back to like I think the fifties or sixties for the car she made. And then a cat hanging around nearby. Um, it's uh, we're both excited about it, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like I, as I've started getting into it and really fleshing it out, um, and I'm currently maybe halfway through, just a little bit short of that. Um, oh. It's been a fun little fun little journey, and. It will hit a lot harder than the drunken pitch, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be a little darker. <laughs> trafficking in general, uh, it's human trafficking primarily for the first book, um, and it will it will hit some dark resonant dark resonances um, between with what our main character is dealing with uh, between the the actual parts of the crime that kind of thing. Uh, but there's a couple of a uh, couple of fun little pieces. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, the bar bar scenes. Uh, there's a couple of bar fights 
for sure. Um, it's very much a, a kind of a darker version of a buddy cop. And we're, we're having a lot of fun writing it. Um, so hopefully, hopefully sometime in the next year it'll be out. But uh, we'll see. We, we might have more news maybe at Liberty Con, maybe at Dragon Con. We'll see. Nice. Because you will be at both of those. I am now currently expected to be attending both of those. I mean, I should hope so because you are you are slotted to buy all of my drinks at Liberty Con. Yeah, and I bought a ticket from you because That's unfortunately why. Yeah. Jeremy won't be there. But I know I do love him, uh, yeah. but no, alas, he won't be there. So I sold his ticket to Shady in exchange for all the drinks I need at the hotel bar. So perfectly fair exchange to me. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, definitely. I'm good for that. That'd be good. That's good. Um, well, I will stay on the 4 HU uh, path because just because I host the show, it doesn't mean I don't get to pitch my books also as well. Um, so if you want to see the book that the very first book that I co-wrote with Casey Azell, it involves four cat assassins um, as they try to clear the name of their mother in the early days of the 4HU universe after humanity has entered the scene. Um, so it's a little bit murder mystery. Um, there's, there's a lot of people getting sliced with claws because cat assassins. Um, this is definitely a drunk pitch because I am a little drunk and uh, it's super fun. It was my uh, second foray into the 4HU after I wrote a short story called Under the Skin. Um, because if you're gonna write about cat assassins, you should probably talk about how they like to get under the skin and play with their prey a little. Um, literally, so and assassin, literally and figuratively to the point that my editor, God bless her, um, wrote something in the notes. This is my very first published short story, BT dubs. Um, and so most of the editing notes were super helpful and, and just really great. But one of them was, this makes your character seem really cold. And I was like, well, <laughs> he's an immoral assassin. So that checks out. Thank you for check check in. that's correct that's he's he's literally having a lot of fun showing a man his own organs so i'm gonna say cold is probably the right vibe um on this one so in assassin there are a few strategic like achilles heel stripping or intestine showing or claw digging um but mostly it's a story of uh, love and connection and family. So, you know, go enjoy Assassin, <laughs> written by <laughs> Casey Zell and Marisa Wolf. <laughs> the R rated version. That's right. Welcome There's a lot the of love. Family. Mm -hmm. So much family and connection and joy. And sometimes that connection is you with your innards. But otherwise, it's. <laughs> or lack of you. connection. Or lack thereof. <laughs> Yeah. There have, you don't need to be connected to all your organs. It turns it's out an it's an anatomy fine. lesson. <laughs> I did. I may or may not have called a doctor friend to be like, how long can somebody live once X, Y, Z happens? And we got into a really technical discussion and it was super gross and really fun. Um, but I didn't it's search it on the internet. have those discussions though. It really is. Is there, so we've got a few minutes left. Is there like, so you guys are experts in, in some random shit and some really cool shit. Um, is there any super fun research moment you've had either with your own expertise or some expert in your life that would be fun to share? It's a great yeah. basic. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. My, so my wife's a nurse practitioner, right? And she's done all this medical school and all that. So I... I will ask like same thing with you. I'll, I'll just randomly ask her, Hey, if I did this to so-and-so, how long would they live or would this kill them? <laughs> mm -hmm. If I do this, will their body spasm before they die? Mm -hmm. Like, like I broke um, in hesitation. No action consequences. Like consequences. consequences. Yeah. Consequences. I broke a dude's neck and mm -hmm. his body spasmed as he was hanging in the air. Cause the call had twisted his head to 180 degrees and picked him up off the ground. Yeah. And his feet were like doing that. So I had to make sure with her that that was what it was. And she's like, no, yeah, that can happen. She goes, when somebody dies of a broken neck, it's typically from suffocation. You don't just instantly die mm -hmm. unless you that right there where the brain stem is, unless you crack that. 
she says that's where you die instantly she goes but um apparently with broken necks most people die of suffocation before you know anything else Mm -hmm. so she says yes if you if someone's neck is broken they can spasm you know it's muscle spasm that doesn't mean he's kicking it just means his muscles are doing all that shit but yeah so that that was kind of cool you know so i have when i have medical need i just yell hey the hell happens (laughs) if i do this Hey, badass wife, please don't murder me. I need your help. Yeah, and it's kind of scary because that chick could kill me in a heartbeat and nobody would be like, oh, he had a heart attack. She's like, yes, he did. Yes, natural causes. (laughs) She's a badass, y'all. She's pretty great. But no, that was that was fun because I was like, I really want to snap this guy's neck, but I want his feet to go all dangly and kicky when he's hanging in the air. Because I want that. I want that. You know, and I just. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, yeah, it worked. I was happy that it worked. That's awesome. Nice. We got science. For science. For science. <laughs> yeah. I just like the I just like the the brutal gory shit. I mean, mm. my bureau fifth my bureau forty two story is pretty brutal. I mean, I'm 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 really hoping Chris lets it go because it's very. Yeah, I mean it's it's not a happy story. In any Mine's way, super chill, so chill, very chill. Well, oh, man, I can't wait for people to read that. I just wanted to put, the, I wanted to put the book down after reading it and go, the fuck. <laughs> That's, That's what I great. want. That's a good reaction. That's good. All right, Kevin, Shady, what research fun do you have? Like I said, there's probably two for me. Um, so. First was you know, in the writing of the the misfits. There's an injury that happens, and as soon as I started writing what I what I was was going to happen to this character, I was like, well, I need to call speaker, and so I that's exactly what I did. I, I sent I sent Rob Hampson an email and said, hey, this is what I'm doing, and this is this is what I need the result to be, and this is what this is what I have. And so he took what I had and he added a couple of things to it. He took a couple of things away, and so. Uh, basically made the the whole little interaction. It's it's one scene. It's about five six lines of dialogue, but it's completely medically accurate for a human uh, based on the the trauma that was received by the character. And so, but going through that, I, then I actually turned around and made the the doctor Doctor Hampson. So that was kind of fun to, nice. to be able to do. Nice. Um, I think the second one though was I was writing the the crossing the 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 Bane book, the alternate history. The, the deeper I got into the research for what happened in the, the, the time frame of December 1776, right before and during and after the Battle of Trenton, the more things I found that I could actually tweak just a little bit. And it was fun to be able to, to see you know, there were there were certain things that happened like in, in the, the real timeline 1776, there's a group of men that are sent across to harass the enemy by one of Washington's uh, not so much allies in the Continental Army. And seeing that and getting to that part in, in the, uh, the actual research, I was able to look at that and bring them back in as a, when they come back into the March on Trenton on the, you know, that, the fateful day, there's a, an opportunity there where they actually are doing something that is dealing with what the cadets have brought and the lost weapon that they have that actually I was able to work in. So all of that stuff actually happened. It's just the addition of the rifle that was missing was the only addition to it. So there were so many cool things like that. Again, the deeper I dug, I, I would literally be sitting with, with the different research books out in my notebook and just kind of just sitting there mind blown, like, you know, holy shit, I can totally tie this in here and I can tie this in here. And uh, it just, it was phenomenal to, to go down that rabbit hole and find all those different connection points. So yeah, that was extremely fun. That's awesome. That's it's a great book fun. too. <clears throat> I got such a good book, you guys. The Crossing, check it out. Thank you. Also, badass cover that Kevin, I think you like helped design, yeah? Yeah, so it was that, that's, so you, the story is when you come up through writing that if you ever get the big traditional published book that you will have nothing to do with the cover. And I can, I can happily report to you that's horse shit um, because when I got the email from, from Tony Weisskopf that the book was going forward, the, the first thing was, if you have any ideas for the cover, you know, we're going to send you a, an information sheet and you fill that out and send it back to us. And then we'll get you in touch with the artist. And so the artist for the crossings artwork was Kieran Yanner. And so I was, 
I, I put down exactly what's on the cover because that was that was what I had in mind from the very beginning. So the cover is it's the the, the famous painting of Washington crossing the Delaware by so Emil good. Lutz. And all I did was change the people in the boat from being colonists and soldiers to being modern soldiers wearing army combat uniforms and, and Kevlar helmets. And I sent that in and the artist writes back and he's like, yes, 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 yes. And so that's what we did. And it that's went awesome. forward and yeah, it's a beautiful cover. Oh, it is. It's it really such a beautiful is. cover. I still have the like little handout that they give at the, the Bain traveling roadshow, yeah. which if you're ever at a convention that has one, you should go. There are prizes. Um, Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. Shady, any fun research things? So on this most recent short story I submitted for We Dare 5 that's coming out, Old Age and Treachery, um, I decided that one of my characters needed to die a very particular way. Sure. And I had to figure out uh, what kind of metal tuning forks were made of. Yeah. This so amazing. Okay. Yeah. So that was a fun little research rabbit hole. And then I had to figure out what <clears throat> if there was a way that all of that would physically work. And so you can probably imagine where I'm kind of going. Uh, I, I, I don't want to quite give it away, right? Because it's still coming out. No spoilers. But, yeah, book's not out. Yeah. But at the moment, there, the math is there. If you want to do two plus two and find out that it equals five, by all means. Um. <laughs> The math is mathing. Yeah. Yeah. The math that. is there. Yeah. The algebra is there. No. So that was, that was a fun little rabbit hole. And I'm pretty sure at that point, I now have an, an FBI tracker on my computer, but we'll see. I feel yeah. like it doesn't take long, honestly. No. My fallen world short story. I was definitely doing that, that website. That's like the nuclear impact <clears throat> map. So I'm pretty sure that got me on there pretty quick. <laughs> nice. So. Like, what city? What happens to Martha's Vineyard if Boston is nuked? Just curious. I looked. I looked up so many friggin' guns when I did my Fallen World story. Is yeah. Like yeah, they're yeah. definitely watching me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bill Webb and I just finished the Spider, um, or just turned it in recently, um, and I finally, finally, um, Tuckerized one of my best friends in the whole world since I was twelve. He's currently a colonel in the Air Force. She's super badass, and I was like, oh, I could tuckerize her she's awesome um so let's put her in a pilot seat and so there's some dog fighting that happens and so i had to uh do a lot of research about what what kind of caliber uh a private jet could maybe bear <laughs> while fighting in the air and i did a lot of googling and i was like this is not giving me what i need let me actually call my air force friends and be like hi if the jet is about this big what size bullet and how do i talk about it and how does it come out real cool <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, cool kids. Well, we are at an hour and I am getting tipsy. So let's go around and tell folks where they can find you on these here internet streets and then out in the world if you are findable in the world. Um, and if there's anything you haven't plugged that you want to, go ahead and do it. Time has no meaning. We can go Shady, Kevin, Nick, if you want. All right. <laughs> uh cool so yeah you can find me at uh david uh you can find me at shady 68333 on twitter and on instagram under david shadoin and if you so choose to want to wander down that particular rabbit hole you can go down facebook and find me there uh also as uh as we talked about earlier i'll be at liberty con this year which is a new new development since the last ckp video i've been on mm -hmm. and dragon con and that's it for now i'll probably make a show at factory con uh but yeah feel free uh i'm not currently scheduled for anything i'm just showing to to enjoy myself and have fun so if you want to come stop by say hi you know treat me like the royalty i am and then uh yeah <laughs> how do you follow uh -huh. that yeah right <laughs> like, yeah all right your majesty i just, just want to be i just want to be ike so bad <laughs> Me lord. <laughs> Nick, that bow wasn't low enough. I'm going to need you to do it again. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Man, there on. we go. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kevin Eikenberry, I can find me at kevinikenberry.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram under both Kevin Eikenberry. Uh, on Twitter, I am the writer Ike. Uh, I've coming up as far as shows and whatnot. 
Um, I am actually not going to be at Liberty Con or Dragon Con this year. Uh, both of those are lining up with some uh, pre-committed family uh, opportunities this year. Um, there's a possibility, it's still very early, but I might be attending the Colorado Springs Comic Con at the latter part of August. Then uh, I will be at Factory Con in North Carolina in October. And then I will be speaking at 20 Books Vegas in November. So that's pretty much the, the end of my, my year at that point. So yeah, come, come find me. I'm, I'm nowhere near as, uh, as royal as shady. <laughs> Who's amongst us, really? <laughs> kind of. Oh, forgive me, my Lord Shady, for I'm just a humble peasant, but <laughs> thou mouse, my, I don't, I'm sorry, I it's can't fine. speak. You tried. I, I respect that. Yeah. That guy, that guy could fucking go on for an old English for days, but I can't. So, back to Floridian shit. Um, Hell yeah. You, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Nick Steverson. You can find me on Facebook, Nick Steverson author. I have two pages, you know, whichever one. Um, join my newsletter. You can get onto that through uh, nicksteverson.com. Uh, I have one short story on there for free. It's about to be like four because I just realized I have all these stories back and didn't know it. So I'm going to add those on there. So you're about to get a whole bunch of free stories if you want them. Um, I'm blanking because I drank more than y'all, I think. Um, but um, – <laughs> April 28th, I've got Hunters and Hijinks coming out. And then you don't have to wait long for book two. It's coming out in June. And then book three is coming out in July. Um, I don't have any other releases. Oh, yes, I do. Marisa and I are both editing a horror anthology with Three Ravens. Boom. And that should come out uh, in October. Do, do, we, do, we, do, we, do we? Should, should we say what that? The cool part about that is yes, Nick. Yes, we should. Go yes, ahead. yes, yes. Okay. So the cool thing is, is it's a horror anthology coming out on Friday the thirteenth mm -hmm. on the month of Halloween. I mean, how awesome is that, right? And there's thirteen <laughs> stories. That's why we're doing it. That's why okay, we're doing I'm in that anthology, aren't I? Yeah, yeah you are. Yeah. Ike is in that anthology, and I've already read his story, and it's friggin' cool, and it's that's based really on cool. something real, which based makes it even story. cooler. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. I'm that's a little that's bit left awesome. out right now. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know you. We planned this. We didn't know you then. We defense. came up with this like a year ago. <laughs> two. Two years, <laughs> two years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. Because we pitched it to Chris two years in advance because uh, the whole anthology thing was, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we're Sorry, doing that. Shady. We would have had And I've got Bureau 42 coming out. I'm writing mm -hmm. Honey Badger, which is a 4HU book. It will be part of the Phoenix Initiative. It does connect to the old Peacemaker uh storyline that just ended and then i can barry and i have he's right there he's awesome um we're coming out with a ray of sunshine lots of cool stuff happening there all the questions answered all the feelings coming back and craziness it's gonna be great um melissa and i are going to be writing three more space hyenas books after these come out yeah. we've already got them planned it's gonna be fun it's gonna be awesome she and i have teamed up with uh kevin steverson and we have a trilogy coming out with him in salvage universe. Um, she and I have a secret project. I'm doing a trilogy with uh, Jason Cordova. That's going to be fun. Um, and then Marisa and oh. I and Melissa and a KC Azelle may have something super awesome coming to you guys in the distant future. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, as far as, as cons go, I'll be at Liberty con. Uh, Consequences, my third book in Salvage Universe, is up for the Imaginarium Award. I'm a finalist in that, so I will be at Imaginarium. Um, Melissa will be there, too. She's also a finalist. We're going head-to-head -head in the novel, in, in the sci-fi novel category. So me and her are up against each other. We got some stiff competition up there. Um, and then she's actually up for two more awards in short stories, and I really hope she wins. But I also want to destroy her in the novel. So, hey. I mean, details, yeah. You know? But if she wins, I will be super happy, and I'll be there to give her a big old hug when she wins. Yeah. Um, and if I'll you win, she still wins because she told you to say right? for it. Yeah, she yeah. did. She's the one that texts me and says, hey, dumbass, go go, go put consequences up for Imaginarium Award because it's available. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do that. So That's my girl, yeah. yeah. She, she is my author twin, as she mm -hmm. as she has dubbed me, and uh, love her to death. But then, so, so I've got Imaginarium. I've got Infinity Con in 
uh, Tallahassee in July. And then I've got uh, also Liberty Con and then I'll be at Factory Con. So that's that's this whole year so far. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'm Maurice Wolf, MauriceWolf.com, MauriceWolf.net. I'm a little tipsy at this particular moment. Um, so you can find me on all the things. And Instagram, it's right here, so I don't have to remember it, at BookDogs. If you like books and you like dogs, follow me on Instagram. Um, and, yeah, I'll be also at LibertyCon, where we'll probably do one of these live, which, holy shit, protect all of us. Um, and our livers. <laughs> just doing good, shit. good luck. Good luck to us and our livers. May God have um, mercy on our souls. Indeed. And also you don't need mercy. You just need more booze. Mm, <laughs> regeneration. It's fine. Uh, we'll also be at DragonCon. Cannot wait. Liberty and Dragon are uh, two of my favorites uh, as this fantasy. I, love, I just love cons. I'm a giant nerd. So what can you do? Um, and also, hold on. I have finished Ooh. my drink. So I guess we're done here. So thanks for joining us in this chaotic uh, adventure of books. Uh, we'll have links to all of the books mentioned that are available in the notes below. Um, and as more things become available, go ahead and pick them up because these guys are fantastic and you can't go wrong. Um, I would say that sober too, probably. So enjoy. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time. Bye y'all.